Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting video for EVE Echoes. This time around we're looking at everyone's favourite missile cruiser, the Kaldari Caracal, or technically I suppose you're actually looking here at a Kaldari Navy issue Caracal, but hey, same thing. Before we jump in, if you are enjoying this content, you can let me know by hitting like on the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and you can comment either down below or, of course, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, or Discord. Let me know what you're enjoying about the content, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos, I do love chatting with you guys. Now, full disclosure, the video that we're about to go over is something that I've wanted to do for a while. Excoundrel did get ahead of me on this one. He's got a brilliant video on uh, high-tier ratting with a Caracal, where he showcases very similar what I'm going to be doing here. I've had a chat with him, and we've both spoken about it, and I would very much like to do my own little video just covering the topic to give my own take on things um, and just showcase how I do it, because there are some subtle differences in how we do it. Also, just because shared audience, I figure if I shout him out, it gets uh, him some coverage from my audience, and vice versa. Anyway, that all said and done, let's have a look at the Caracal. Now, ultimately, this is a missile boat. It is a decent missile boat. It gets some nice bonuses for using uh, medium-level missiles, and it's got some good speed, good stats to it, all that kind of thing. The strategy I'm going to show is very similar to how I use drones. If you've watched my videos using the Worm or the Vexor, if I've put those out before this video, if I haven't put them out before this video, sorry, that's going to get confusing, you'll see that I like kiting. Now, in my videos about uh, like tanking and fitting the defensive modules, I talk about the different types of tanking, whether you're shield tanking, armor tanking, passive or active tanking. There is also speed tanking, um, which is basically where you move so fast you just don't get hit. And there is also kiting. Kiting just means don't get hit in general. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to showcase how to do with missiles in this video. So range is important, missile skills are important too. So why the Caracal? Well, let's have a look at its uh, info page. Now the Caracal Navy issue has four high slots, three medium slots, four low slots, and then three each of the mechanical and power grid rigs um, for its bonuses, its skill bonuses. Um, for every level in advanced medium missile operation, you get an additional 10% medium missile damage and 10% medium missile flight time. Um, for cruiser command, you get additional scan resolution, which is how quickly um, you lock on, and sensor strength, which is the range at which you can lock onto things. Um, I think someone can probably correct me in the details down below. And you see flight velocity of 230 isn't bad for a cruiser. Warp speed of 3 is average, it's what you'd expect. Inertia modifier is, however, very low on this particular ship. Maximum lock targets of 6, decent cargo hold capacity, and a somewhat fairly decent shield resistance bracket there. As its basic uh, sort of de uh, defense here, you can see I've got this kitted out as a shield tank, 6460 effective uh, hit points, spread across mainly shield but with a little bit of armor um, and structure there as well. It's a fairly solid ship. This build is not capacitor stable, it does run at a 3 minute capacitor time, um, and offense only 234.07. Offense isn't overly important here, what's more important is our survivability in this particular build. Now of course, this Oh, excuse me. This mainly comes down to skills. When you're looking at advanced medium missile operation bonus um, and cruiser command, you'll see that I don't, I haven't skilled heavily into things like missiles. I'm much more, as I'm sure you're aware by now, I'm much more of a Minmatar player, so I like my small projectile turrets. Um, I have been using some of the drones and that recently as well here, but you can see if we go into uh, medium missile operation. I haven't even gone into advanced medium missile operation yet. Um, I've been too busy working on other things. I haven't even got medium missile operation up to five yet. So once you get into advanced medium missile operation, you'll see that that damage number on this does skyrocket. Mine is low. Mine is low purely because I'm not overly skilled into this. If you're skilled into missiles, especially medium missiles, you can quite, uh, quite quickly double that skill. I mean, heck, if we look alone there, 10% medium missile damage for each of those skill points. That means besides the damage bonus that those skills give you anyway, which is, I believe, about 50-30%, somewhere around there, you also get the 10% the per level. That's an additional 50%. So if you've skilled into this, you're going to be adding another good 50% onto that. You're going to be looking way toward the 400 DPS mark. Uh, mark with the gear I've got, but as I said, range is our most important thing here. When it comes to missiles, of course, there are numerous different types. You've got your light missiles, your rapid light missiles, heavy assault missiles, that kind of thing. I've gone for Undertaker heavy missile launches, 
Of course, you can go for the cheaper, more basic missile launchers. Go for heavy missile launchers, is my point, simply because of that missile range at the bottom, 35.36 kilometers. These things have a decent range. They've actually got a fairly good explosion uh, velocity and a, sl a small enough explosion radius that they do actually do decent damage to most ships as well. They've got good application. Damage types, as you'd expect from missiles, it's a full 25% spread across the gap. Um, but ultimately, the idea here, as I said, it's all to do with range. If I'm doing less DPS, it just means I've got to stay at range for longer. And that's where the kiting is going to come into effect here. It's all about the survivability. Obviously, the higher the DPS, um, the less time you need to survive in combat. Now for medium fittings, because medium fittings are sub-weapons that tend to require us to be fairly close, up close and personal, I've not bothered fitting any on this ship because I'm not going to use uh, anything like a warp disruptor simply because <laughs> I'm not going to be close enough to use it. Same with like an energy Nosferatu. We're not aiming to be close enough to use those things. So let's have a look at the low slots. Low slots, I've got a dealer 50 mega newton micro warp drive because I want to be able to punch some very fast speeds out of this as quickly as possible. As I said, this is all about getting to range and maintaining range, so the ability to move quickly is of vital importance. Mark 7 Ballistic Control System there, just to up that missile damage a bit. Full duplex uh, ballistic computer as well, um, just to, again, whack on some extra damage on there um, in regards to those missiles. It's just getting that extra damage. Once I'm at range, I can pop both of those on. And a Mark 5 Damage Control as well. Now, the damage control um, ups your defences, ups your resistances, Ultimately, the idea is that if I get into a sticky situation, I can pop on the damage control and I can shoot off out of combat. Now, some people do like to swap one of those uh, drone controllers, uh, drone controllers, sorry, those ballistic systems for something like a shield booster, just so you can repair in inverted commas your shields when you're out, um, when you're out of taking damage. You can just repair that a little bit faster. I'm not intending to take much damage, so the idea for me is to pull away quickly. Now for rigs, I haven't put any rigs particularly on this one, but just because I haven't had the money to do it. Um, what you'd look at there for rigs is of course things like missile damage, uh, missile flight time, and missile distance, that kind of thing. Possibly anything to your thrusters as well that allow you to move that little bit faster. Again, don't worry too much about defense, it's mainly on range and hitting things. Anyway, so that kind of covers what we need to look at in regards to fittings. In regards to skills for this particular ship, well, of course, under weapon technology, we're using missiles. So we're going to scroll down to medium missile operation. Medium missile operation at full level of five gives you an additional 20% missile damage and 20% missile velocity and 20% flight time. So you can you hit faster and that flight time with the extra velocity means that they travel further. Remember, missiles have kind of a time to fuse on them meaning uh, your maximum range is affected by your flight time and missile velocity. So training that up to level 5 is definitely worth it, as is going into advanced. Oh, yay, some, uh, some of my stuff is selling. Um, if you go up into the advanced, obviously you're getting the bonuses from the Caracal Navy issue uh, ship itself, plus you're also getting those bonuses there of 10% extra damage, 15% velocity, 15% flight time, and ballistic control system duration lasts 2 seconds longer. Beyond that, of course, medium missile upgrade. Again, if we look at that at level 5, that's additional missile damage and a re uh, reduced explosion radius, which means you can hit smaller, faster moving ships. Ultimately, those are going to be your main skills for dealing the damage, but of course, it's not all just about the damage. So things like cruiser command as well, very useful for that extra velocity and inertia modifier. And under navigation, the micro warp drive skill is very useful for this build as well. Anyway, I think that just about covers everything I want to say about the fitting, so let's undock this thing and give it a go in combat. Right, so here we are outside of Doril now, ready to take on uh, an anomaly. Now, as I said, I'm only going to be able to show you this in a tier 6 anomaly, just because ultimately that's where I've come to, and that's all that's around me. But trust me, this does work all the way up to tier 10. I have done the tier 10 encounters, uh, the tier 10 story encounters, using this build, and I have gone further out into uh, Deep Nullsec and done it in tier 10 space there as well. So let's have a look here down the list. We'll just do a small anomaly. Now notice when you come to one of these anomalies as well, what you don't just have to warp in at the exact point because we wanna be at a bit of range from everything else. I'm going to warp in at about 50 kilometers away from everything else. The aim here is that I'm going to be at range to start with and I can immediately start kiting. 
rather than jumping into a combat anomaly and ending up smack bang in the middle of an entire fleet. So the Caracal is going to take flight now, and for this video, unfortunately, we're not going to have any flashy graphics. This is going to be zoomed right out, because I need to be able to use this entire, uh, this circular sort of reticle, I suppose you can call it. So we're jumping into the combat zone now. I've got my finger over that damage control in case we need it, but you'll see I should come in at a fair distance away from the ships. There we are, about 50 odd kilometers away, so I can lock onto these. And while we're locking on, you see where they are in relation to this circle. If I then turn the circle so that these guys, let's do it this way actually. If I turn that circle so that these guys are about 90 degree from me there. Cool, we're happy with that. I can use the circle, double tap to manually align to the edge of the circle over there. And I can now, if I needed to, micro warp drive away. Now, as it happens, I'm just going to uh, lock on with my missiles. I am going to zoom in a little bit because I'm hoping you can see how this will work here. You see that their missiles ultimately aren't quite hitting me, neither are mine hitting them. So you can see there, there's a missile coming out of their little cluster. Is it going to hit me? Yes, that one actually does, but it's not much. Mine aren't hitting them, though. I'm a little bit too far away. So what we're going to do is approach slightly. I'm keeping my eyes on this reticle here. There we are. That's at the range I want to be at. So we're going to double tap again to kite into the distance. If I start taking some heavy damage, I can pop on that, uh, that micro warp drive and my uh, to move away. And I can pop on the damage controller to stop taking the additional damage. Now, if I pop on my boosters there, you'll see that I can actually start doing some really heavy damage to that Gistam Stabber training. And it will quite comfortably take that down. Let's pop the damage control on as well, just to showcase to you guys what that can actually do. And if I open up the fitting menu with that now on, look at that defense. Look at that defense, 1, 000, uh, 13,269. The DPS has gone up as well there because I'm using those ballistic control computers. But here we are. Ultimately, the idea is that I'm kiting away from them. I'm dealing damage with those missiles whilst outranging some of uh, more their shorter ranged guns. If these were guys who had little turrets and that on them, um, like small, uh, small energy turrets or that kind of thing, I'm going to be out of the range of a lot of that and just quite comfortably doing my own little thing. And you see my missiles hit for a decent whack of damage on these guys. Um, so I can just keep drifting away from them. I am drifting away slowly, um, keeping in range as much as possible. If it starts to get a little bit that I'm pulling too far away, you see I can line up there, see that they're 90 degrees now, they're full 180 degrees behind me. Turn the camera to get them to the 90 degree side. Double tap on the edge of the circle and I'll start drifting that way instead, which allows them just to draw a little bit closer. You'll see that 31 kilometers has gone down to 30, going down to 29, just keeps that little bit of distance there. Now, if I really need to, I can pop on that micro warp drive and you'll see up goes my uh, ship velocity well over a kilometer per second with this thing on. I can shoot away from that. You can even see on screen how fast I'm moving away from those. Um, but let's turn that off because I don't want to be going too far away when the next group spawns. You'll see, here goes my missiles. Bang! Down goes that Gisty Thrasher. Now we wait. Wait for the second wave to come through. And you see they're nice and far away so I can fight these guys on my own terms. I can actually pause the ship here as well to let these guys get that little bit closer. I'm quite happy but they're too far away at the moment for me to do anything. So if I just sit there, I mean you can see there, that is them firing howitzers or small projectile turrets or something like that at me. And you can see there that it's missing. Lots of nice little zero damages because I am too far away. Now personally, I do prefer doing this with drones. Um, just because I find that I can get the range that little bit further. But with the right skills on a Caracal, 100% you can do this nice and comfortably with the missiles too. And this is just ultimately kiting. The idea is that I'm bringing these guys, I'm letting these guys stay far enough away that they're not hitting me. I wait for them to come into a damage range. I can then hit them whilst outranging their guns and then later on come back and start uh, like moving away. If I, if I start taking too much damage, I can just move out of the range of their guns again. So let's put those missiles on. And again, you'll see I'm too far away at the moment for those missiles to go in if we long press. 35.36 kilometers is ultimately where I want to be at. So about 35 Ks is where I want to be. And I can't wait for Eve Echoes to add the keep at function. 
Right now we've got Approach and we've got Orbit. In EVE Online there is an option to keep at distance, which means essentially you kind of get to a certain range um, and then you just keep pulling away, you just never get closer to. There we are, so I'm at the 38 now. Let's spin again, 90 degrees, so that we can go off at a perfect tangent there. That should now hit. Let's see if that does some damage, and if it does, perfect. I can pop those computers on, and actually I'm going to come in at slightly less than 90 degrees, so that the other ships in this group can start gaining some distance on me too. There we are, so that's our Gisty Burst. Looks like it's about to go down in my next missile salvo. There it goes, and what have we got left? We've got two ships left, a Stabber and a Thrasher. Ideally, I'd like to take that Thrasher out first, because that's going to be the more problematic one. Um, so let's cancel the missiles. Wait for them to... There we go. Realign. Fire onto the Thrasher. Just because the Thrasher is a smaller target, my missiles don't do quite so well against smaller targets. Um, so I'd like to kill it while it's at range before it gets up close and personal and I have difficulties with its relative velocity against my explosion radius and explosion velocity. As it stands though, that's doing some hefty damage. I think the next volley or two should finish off that Thrasher and then we can take out the Stabber. And you'll see I'm taking almost no damage. I'm going to put that damage control on again just to, to showcase. There we go. But the idea here, as I said, is just ultimately we're keeping at range by sort of kiting sideways. Um, I can keep those at a bit of distance. We're getting a bit close now at 16 kilometers. So let's pop that micro warp drive on, get some distance between us, see how that works out for us. And then both of those drone uh, missile control systems, you can tell I've been using drones a lot recently. Both those missile control systems on. Let's turn the micro warp drive off as I'm doing a decent speed now. There we are, my shield's a little bit low. I probably would want a shield booster, actually, just because I don't do as much damage as I thought I would do. And my skills don't have quite the range of the missiles that I'd like them to. Ideally, you want to have your missiles at like a 40 um, upwards kilometer range. If you've got that 40 kilometers plus range, you tend to outrange most of the uh, other weapons in the game. But you can see here that I can quite comfortably get on with just blowing all of these guys up one by one on my own terms. Again, they're all the way up there. I've got to wait for them to come down. If they do want to come closer, I can just I, I can blow them up at range. If they get within my distance, I can just hit that micro warp drive and boost away a bit. Anyway, that really does cover everything I wanted to say about this particular uh, fitting. Um, it does work with a Caracal training, which is a nice, easy, cheap way of starting it off. Um, obviously, with only the three turrets rather than four, the three fittings rather than four, you are going to be doing less damage. Um, and you do have uh, the percentage on the skills is lower as well, so do bear that in mind. That said, however, um, of course, then you can use that to start off with, make some money ratting or doing combat encounters, then move up to something like the Caracal, the standard Caracal. Um, those tend to go on the market for about 30, 000, uh, 30 million at the moment. Not 30 million, sorry, about uh, 3 million at the moment. And then, of course, once you've got a bit more money, you can then whack that all the way up to a Caracal Navy issue for that full fitting and the extra skills. Ultimately, a Caracal itself is actually better until you're using advanced missile, uh, advanced medium missiles. And um, that is a mistake I have made in this build. I bought, the, I, I picked up the uh, Navy issue Caracal from the uh, event, the end of beta event to showcase it. Um, and yeah, I, I would have actually done better had I saved up and bought a Caracal just because it gets better uh, skills. If I showcase that very quickly, just by opening the ship tree, and we'll go into the Kaldari ship tree down here. Give that a moment to load on the lag. <laughs> My poor, poor internet. There we are, Kaldari state. And if we go across, here we have our Caracal and Caracal trainer. So there you can see medium missile operation bonus per level is plus 5% medium missile damage. At the moment, I've only got medium missile operation to level 4. I haven't got to advanced yet, so I would be getting an additional 20% missile damage and an additional 40% missile flight time from that. As it happens, though, because I'm using this one and it only gets those uh, bonuses from advanced medium missile operation, I'm not actually getting any additional missile damage or any additional flight time. So it would have been better for me, as a little side note, to yes, to have done that in the standard Caracal rather than the Navy issue. And oh, I am hitting things, so I'm going to go back to this screen and finish off this, uh, this particular anomaly. 
Anyway, that wraps up everything I wanted to say about the Caracal and about missile tanking. Um, I do hope you find it useful. Let me know in the comments down below. I do apologise that, uh, as I said, I don't quite have the skills to showcase this properly. Um, but I hope the message does come across on how, um, how this can work. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.